Hi and welcome to this third video on probability. In this video we're going to be looking at conditional probability. Okay, conditional probability involves calculating probabilities of events given that other events have already occurred. So I've already alluded to this a little bit, uh, talking about independence and uh, the idea of when we were rolling a dice, uh, two tetrahedral dice, and we, one of the events was getting an eight, a total of eight. Well, that event couldn't happen without getting uh, a four on the first roll. So um, if you think of two uh, six-sided dice, there's no way we can get a total of 12 unless we roll a six on the first dice. So conditional probabil probability is about asking questions like, what's the probability of an event happening given that something else has happened first? We represent this uh, by drawing this line down the middle. So this is the probability of B happening given that A has happened. So in a probability tree, this probability here is the probability that B is going to happen given that A has already happened. Knowing that we multiply along the branches here, the probability of A and B happening is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. So rearranging that formula, we get this. So the more general formula for conditional probability is this one here. It's not on the formula sheet, you have to remember it. So this reads, the probability of A given that B's happen is the probability of A and B happening, A intersection B, divided by the probability of B happening. Just remember that the event on the bottom line here is always the second event here, the one that you're given. Okay. So you can do conditional probability with tree diagrams, with Venn diagrams, or with sample spaces. So I'm going to just show you a few of those. Two important things with the definitions that we had. If two events are independent, then the probability of A given B happening, well, it doesn't matter if B's happened or not. If they're independent, this is just going to be the probability of A happening. It takes a little bit of time to think about that one, but think about it. If A and B are independent, then whether B has happened or not will not influence the probability of A happening. So probability of A given B is just the probability of A. Also, if you're looking at mutually exclusive events where the intersection is zero, if B happens, A can't happen. So the probability of A given B is zero if two events are mutually exclusive. Let's look at the same example we did before in our previous video on tree diagrams about the football team playing at home uh, winning 80% of their games at home, but only 50% of their games away. Part C is the conditional probability question. Find the probability of the team that's playing at home, given that you know that they won the game. So if you read the newspaper, they've won the game, what's the probability now that we have that information that they are at home? Okay, so same tree diagram as before. I'm going to use the formula for part C. Probability they're at home given that they've won. So it's important to get the order right. Here's the probability of that they are home and won. So that's the top line of the tree diagram, 0.6 times 0.8, divided by the probability that they've won. Now the probability that they won is 0.6 times 0.8 plus 0.4 times 0.5. That's what we worked out in part B. We worked this out, out earlier as well. So that gives us 12 over 17 or 0.706. So there's a 70.6% chance that they were playing at home given that we know that they won. Let's have a look at a conditional probability question now using a Venn diagram. We've got uh, 50 students, 18 students played both cricket and rugby, 12 played cricket only, 4 students played neither sport. Okay, so the Venn diagram would look like this. 18 students playing both. We're told that, sorry, yeah, 18 students playing both. 12 played cricket only, hence the 12 here. We know four played neither, and we know the total of all of these numbers here has got to be 50, hence there's 16 people here that played only rugby. Okay, so what's the probability that a randomly chosen student plays rugby only? We've got that one, 16 out of 50 which is 8 over 25, or 0.32. The probability that a randomly chosen rugby player plays cricket also. Now, in this question here, there's no word here that says given that. But if you read the question carefully, you'll see this is conditional probability. 
calculate the probability that a randomly chosen rugby player. So given that we've got a rugby player, what's the probability they play cricket also? All right. So if we know we've got a rugby player, we know we're just dealing with the people inside this circle here. All right. So if we look at the answer to C, we're only dealing with these 34 people here, the 34 rugby players. What's the probability of choosing one of those people out that they play cricket also? Well, there's 18 of those people that play cricket as well. So the answer to the question is 18 out of 34. 9 over 17 or 0.529. Now if we want to use the formula for that, what's the probability we get a cricket player given that they're a rugby player? So what's the probability they're a cricket and rugby player? That's 18 out of 50. What's the probability they're a rugby player? 34 out of 50. You see we get the same answer using the formula. For D, the question is what's the probability that we, given that we have someone who plays cricket, what's the probability they're a rugby player? Okay, so probability of R given C. So given that we've got a cricketer, we know we've got one of these 30 people. What's the chance they play rugby? 18 out of those 30 play uh, rugby also. So 18 out of 30, that's one way of looking at it. If you use the formula, you see you get the exact same answer. Okay, are these two events independent? If they are, then this would be true. Remember that. Don't go on gut instinct. You have to show either that that is true or not true to prove if two events are independent or otherwise. So in this case, the probability that someone is a cricketer and rugby player is 18 out of 50. The probability they're a cricketer is 30 out of 50. A rugby player, 34 out of 50. Those are not equal. You do the calculation on the left on your calculator. Not equal, therefore, the two events are not independent. Uh, another way you can think of it is since 30 out of the 50 students or 60% of them play cricket, if the events were independent, then the probability of selecting a cricket player from the group of rugby players would be 0.6, but as you can see, it's only 0.529, so not independent. And the last one, what's the probability of C and R dash? So that's someone who's a cricket player and not a rugby player. So that's these 12 people here, so 12 out of 50, or 0.24. Here's a problem that involves conditional probability in a table form. Uh, once again, you may have seen this kind of problem before. So we've got a table that gives uh, type of car, uh, low, medium, high fuel consumption, and whether it's owned by a male or a female, and we've uh, collected some data for, on these 100 people. So if we select a person at random, we've got two events here. L is the event the person owns a, owns a low rated car, and F is the event that the female is chosen. And we want to work out these three probabilities. The last one is what we're interested in here, the probability that someone's a female given that they own a low-rated car. All right. So we don't need a Venn diagram or a tree diagram or anything. We can just look at this table. Okay, so, so if I do some uh, calculations here, the probability someone owns a low-rated car, there's 35 people out of the 100 own a low-rated car. So 35 out of 100. So cancel down, 7 out of 20, or you could write 0.35 if you wanted. What's the probability that someone's a female and they own a low-rated car? Okay, so that's 23 people out of the 100 in our survey, or 0.23 if you want to write it as a decimal. And the last part. What's the probability someone's a female given that they own a low-rated car? Okay, so given that they own a low-rated car, that means we're only dealing with this 35 people. 23 of them are females, so the probability is 23 out of 35. 